up guys, welcome back. First and foremost, I wanna say happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. If you're looking for something extra special to do this year, nothing shows you care better than a home-cooked meal. Now typically when you think about Father's Day dinners, you're thinking about big ribeye steaks and lobster tails, but we all know that groceries are super expensive right now, so I'm gonna show you how to make a meal without breaking the bank. Today we're going with an elevated version of fish and chips. You can use whatever fish you can find at the store. Today I'm going with trout, and I'm gonna show you guys how to make these delicious truffle parmesan fried potatoes. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, meet me in the kitchen. Let's make it happen. First things first, let's talk about these potatoes. This is my favorite potato recipe of all time. I'm excited to show you guys how we're gonna do this. We have some yellow or gold potatoes and some red potatoes. I'm just using those to give a little bit of color contrast, but feel free to do whatever you want. We're gonna first wash these potatoes off. So I'm gonna add them to my pot and then rinse them with some cold water. We're gonna eat the skin, so we wanna make sure that the skin is nice and clean. So just cover them with some cold water, get in there with your hands and make sure they're nice and clean. Rinse them two or three times until the water runs clear. For this technique today, we're gonna to parboil the potatoes, which basically means pre-cook them until they're nice and tender. Then we're gonna hand smash them and deep fry them. So first things first, we're gonna cover them with some water after they're nice and clean. And then we're gonna go in with about a tablespoon or so of salt, then bring them up to a boil for about five to seven minutes or until they start to get fork tender. All right, my friends, here we have some rainbow trout that I picked up from my local grocery store. Feel free to use whatever fish you can find that's fresh. As you can see, these fillets are pretty big, so what I'm gonna do is cut them in half, and that'll give us six nice sized fillets to fry up. All right, so I'm just gonna cut this at an angle and try to have two equal size fillets. So this side's a little thicker, so this side will be a little longer since it's thinner, but they're about the same weight, is that, and that's what you're looking for. There we go. All right, so as you can see, we have our fillets portioned out. They're about the same size as the palm of my hand. I would say they're about three ounces or so each. I'm gonna add them to a mixing bowl. We're gonna season them up. And then we're gonna get to work on our flour. For our seasonings, we're gonna keep it pretty simple, guys. I got my all-purpose seasoning, which is basically a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder, a couple other seasonings. But use whatever all-purpose seasoning that you like. This is the hot version. It has a little cayenne and jalapeno. So if you don't have that, just use a little cayenne in its place. We're gonna use some Old Bay because it's great on seafood. I'm here in the Chesapeake area, and this is the gospel around here. We're also gonna go in with just a little bit of sazon, which is kind of like an all-purpose seasoning as well. It also has some turmeric that's gonna add some color, and I just enjoy the flavor that it provides as well. So that's the seasoning blend that we're going with today. So we're going down first with the all-purpose seasoning. When it comes to seasoning your fish, guys, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just do whatever feels right for you. Season to taste. I would say start with a teaspoon or two of each. My all-purpose seasoning is low sodium, so if your seasoning is not low sodium, you might wanna be a little bit lighter with it. Also, if you have a favorite seasoning in the pantry for seafood, then by all means, grab that and use that. I do like to add a little bit of heat to the party, so that's why I'm going down with the hot all-purpose seasoning. But if you're kind of a punk when it comes to spice, which I am, you can leave that out. So we got the hot AP, we've got the original AP, and now we're going down with some Old Bay. Let me know in the comments what your favorite seasoning is for fish. You can't go wrong with this blend right here though. And then just like a quarter packet of sazon on the fish in order to put the rest in our flour mixture. Let's get in there with your hands. Don't be shy, guys. Make sure that you massage that in. You want the fish to be evenly coated in all that flavor. There we go. And now it's time to move on to the flour or the breading. So we're gonna go with two cups of all-purpose flour to one cup of yellow cornmeal. If for whatever reason you don't like cornmeal, you can go all flour. I like the texture that it provides, so I'm going in with a two to one ratio. One cup of cornmeal and two cups of all-purpose flour. 
You could also buy the, you know, the stuff that's already pre-packaged up at the store. This is my version of that, basically. There we go. Two cups of flour, one cup of cornstarch, and then we're gonna use the same seasonings as we used on the fish. So again, the Old Bay. Don't be shy with that. Then the low sodium all purpose seasoning. And the rest of that one packet of Sasson from earlier. Little touch of the hot AP. Again, guys, season to taste. I'm gonna get in there with a spoon and mix all that around. You wanna make sure that you can see that the seasoning is evenly distributed in the flour. Quick reminder, guys, that all the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. There we go. And now the final component of your frying station needs to be your egg wash, or you can use a buttermilk blend if you want to. Today we're going with four eggs, about a quarter cup of milk. We're gonna break out the whisk, beat those eggs, like they're in charge of the gas prices. And then we're gonna add a little hot sauce because why the hell not? Use whatever your favorite hot sauce is, a little Texas Pete, Frank's Red Hot, the Old Bay hot sauce, which I haven't been able to find recently. So about a teaspoon of hot sauce, four eggs, and a quarter cup of milk. Mix that to combine, and we'll dip our fish in this prior to the flour before it goes into the oil. So I just turned the heat off because I wanna show you guys what I mean by fork tender. So this is what we're looking for on our potatoes. The fork goes in, it gives a little resistance. It's not super tender like we're making mashed potatoes, but tender enough that you can put the fork through there. So what we're gonna do now is allow these potatoes to cool. Once they become cool enough to handle, we're gonna hand smash them and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So for this technique with the potatoes, it's a couple things that are important. Number one, you want them to be tender enough to hand smash. Like so, just use the palm of your hands. Don't smash it all the way. Just partially smash it like you see right here. And then number two, you wanna make sure that they're dry. Obviously, you don't wanna put a wet potato into some hot oil. So just take the extra time to make sure they're dry a little bit or dry a lot, I should say. Hand smash and set them aside. Just repeat this process until all of your potatoes have been smashed. Just like that. Flatten them out like this. Flattening them out like this allows the edges to get nice and crispy and golden brown, which you'll see here in just a moment. As you can see, I have my frying station set up here. We got the fish that's properly seasoned. We have our egg and milk mixture with a little hot sauce. We have our seasoned flour, and this will be the plate that it's going to rest on. So as you guys know, if you've been watching my channel, anytime I'm deep frying something, I like to give the flour a little bit of time to adhere to the meat. That'll ensure that it doesn't fall off quickly and burn up at the bottom of your deep fryer which will result in a nice crispy piece of fried fish or chicken, whatever the case may be. Obviously today it's fish. So you wanna get in there with your hands and make sure that this is nicely coated. We don't want any bald spots on our fish. There we go. Shake off any excess flour. And then we're gonna let that hang out on the plate for a couple minutes while we let our oil come up to temperature. From the egg wash to the flour, from the flour to the plate. If you want your breading to be extra thick and crispy, you can repeat this process. So here we have about two liters of vegetable oil or peanut oil, whatever you prefer to use. We're gonna bring that up to about 350 degrees, at which point we'll go ahead and drop the potatoes. And when I say drop, I mean place them in there gently. So we're not quite at 350, almost there, about another minute or two, and we'll be ready to go. So our oil just reached 350 degrees. One of the most important pro tips I can give you, if you're frying fish, always fry your potatoes before the fish. You don't wanna drop those potatoes in some seafood flavored oil. I'm gonna carefully place the potatoes in the oil 
Just let them do their thing. They're gonna fry for about eight to 10 minutes or until they're golden brown, crispy, and beautiful. Try not to overcrowd your fryer. All right, so as you can see, it's been a couple minutes. And they're already starting to get nice and golden brown. The edges are crisping up nicely. I like the color of the red and the gold together. It's gonna look good on the plate. Those are the sort of things that I'm thinking about. Oh man, that looks good. You guys have gotta give this potato recipe a try. That's what you wanna see, my friends. Nice and golden brown on the edges, nice and crispy. We know they're tender because we boiled them. These are gonna be fantastic for Father's Day. So I'm gonna lay them now on a wire rack to allow them to drain to help them remain crispy. If you put them on a paper towel, the paper towel's job is to absorb oil. Once it absorbs the oil, it'll start to get soggy and eventually your potatoes will get soggy. And we wanna keep these nice and crispy. And we'll just let these cool for just a second while we fry our fish. Remember guys, fish after the potatoes. Unless you like fishy potatoes, then you got a problem. So now that our oil has come back up to 350 degrees, we're gonna gently place our beautiful trout fillets into the oil. Remember guys, don't overcrowd your fryer. I'm gonna do two batches here, three and three. Fish fries really quickly. This whole recipe comes together pretty quick. Beautiful fried fish, the best potatoes you've ever had, and an ice cold beer. And you'll have a happy dad. That kind of rocked. Fish fries really quick, guys. I'm talking, you know, three, four minutes, maybe five if you got a thicky. This is what we're looking like after about two minutes, nice and golden brown. I'm gonna ensure that they're cooking evenly on both sides. So you might wanna flip them over. There we go. For my scientists out there, fish is done at 145 degrees internal temperature. Or as your dad would probably say, once they start floating. Look at that, beautiful. Golden brown, properly seasoned. I think that's a money shot. Super simple here, my friends. We're gonna season up the potatoes that we fried to perfection and then top them with some Parmesan cheese, a little truffle oil, which is the only relatively expensive ingredient that we're using today. You can find this at TJ Maxx sometimes for a discounted price though. So always check out TJ Maxx. They have a nice little section with food ingredients. Then we have our parsley. You can use the pre-grated stuff from the store if you want to, or if you wanna really impress your dad today, you can hit them with a little freshly grated Parmesan. About a quarter cup or so. Then we'll go down with a teaspoon or two of the truffle oil. And then a nice quarter cup of parsley. Give that a toss. I'm just gonna go down with a little AP and a pinch of salt, like finishing salt to top things off. Look at those, beautiful. A Little bit more cheese, cause we're here for a good time, not a long time. And now it's time to plate this up. You can hear how crispy they are. Oh man, I gotta get in there and try one early. Cheers, my friends. Mm. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me, guys, looking good. That, my friends, is a fish platter fit for a king. I'm gonna give you guys a couple more shots of this and then I'm going in there for a taste test. And now for the moment of truth. I'm gonna go ahead and get in here for a taste test. Before we do that though, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. Oh man, glistening. Give me a little piece of fish. Mm. 
Oops, almost forgot. There we go. Now we can give it a taste test. 